like it when Ted's here. Everybody knows how the show runs. It's quick. It's effective. <laughs> it's to the point. Al, though, it's your show now. Let's hit some news, rumors, and hot takes. All right. Um, so first thing I have um, that uh, in talks about the next WWE 2K game, um, it will most likely be dedicated to Bray Wyatt, and they are looking at new player versus player opportunities. Unless it's significantly different, I'm not buying it. Like, I didn't get 2K23 because adding war games was not enough to merit the price for me. My question about them doing Bray Wyatt so soon after his death, guys, I, I'm curious about your take. Does it almost seem too soon after his death? Because they made such a big stink about not putting any merch in the shop and what they did have would go to the family. But for them to immediately turn around and three or four months later announce that he's going to be the cover artist for the new 2K24 game, and there's going to be an entire Bray Wyatt feature in The Fiend. Does it feel like they're kind of talking out of both sides of their mouth now? It could have been. I'm, I'm, it does not need to be a whole game. It could have been an add-on pack. You can run these games three or four years with one game. But add, add on, like, an exclusive... Bray Wyatt extension expansion story, but don't capitalize on it. Give it, just give it to us. No. Like yeah. let us let let us remember them the way we wanted to. Let us remember those storylines. Don't try to be a cash grab. And if you release a, if you go through and reprogram and release a whole game, yeah, it's going to be touching. And I understand where they're coming from doing it in memory of him. But unless the proceeds of this game are going to strictly his family, it's just a it's a it start. It looks like a cash grab to me. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I totally agree. Like like he was saying, if you have the expansion pack, and then you say you buy the game, and then the proceeds from the expansion pack go to the family, it seems more genuine. Whereas if you're just throwing him in there at the very beginning. It does seem like, okay, we gave some money from merch, but now we're going to go ahead and make money from this. So, yeah, I'm not too enthused about it. That's pretty much my sentiment as well. Agree. Um, so next thing is, um, and everybody's kind of been talking about this, so we'll touch on it briefly. Um, we won't be seeing Gunther at Elimination Chamber, and we may not see him at, uh, what are they calling it, Bash in Berlin. Yeah, Bash in Berlin. Uh, because he's not able to, he's working on getting his U.S. citizenship and is not able to leave the country for six months. So, I honestly think that it's probably a wise choice to not have Imperium in Germany. Just throwing that out there. We've we've had that conversation on here, I think, a time or two. Yeah. Um, the the issue is the, the visa stuff, right? Is because he's trying to gain residency in the States mm -hmm. and until he spends a certain amount of time here um, without leaving the country he can't get his citizenship or residency so it makes sense and for wwe it's a shortcoming on their booking side but there's really nothing they can do about it now he's got to stay in the states for yeah. six months or eight months without leaving so it is what it is I mean, visas are hard to get so you know it's especially not entertainers visas well this would be because he got married so this would be a citizenship it's a citizenship visa Oh, yeah. Well, that's even tougher than the yeah. entertainment visa. Yeah. Uh, Bo, Ted, you guys got anything on the, the visa issues for like, uh, we've seen a lot of visa issues recently. We've seen them with Becky traveling. We saw them with Jimmy Uso getting into Canada for different reasons. 
Um, we've seen it with uh, Gunther now coming to get his residency. Yeah. In the States. Uh, what do you guys think about visa issues with wrestlers? Uh, well, even in AEW, uh, Ray Phoenix had that issue uh, recently too. Um, Good call with all of them, yeah. Yeah, so it's, um, you know, it's just, what do you say? It's um, United States uh, paperwork. You know, it's uh, it's just <laughs> it's just the way we are. Right? So you know, it's it sucks for the wrestlers and for the booking and all that. But uh, hey, it's red tape in America. So uh, welcome to the real world, guys. <laughs> no, completely agree. I couldn't agree even even more. Like that was perfectly sense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Flair signs a multi-year deal with AEW, and Woo Energy is the official energy woo! drink of AEW. <laughs> Why do y'all? I feel like AEW is only trying to sign Flair because they're trying to woo—no pun intended—Charlotte away because they have her husband. Despite the fact that like they're a little rocky right now, they have her husband. Now they have her father. You know what I mean? Like, do you think that they would be able to get Charlotte to leave WWE? Money talks at the end of the day. And she is a flair. She is a flair. So listen, woo, stretch your stuff wherever you want to strut it. Because at the end of the day, your career don't last forever. Go. I'll take Kevin Nash. Your career ain't lasting forever. Go where the guaranteed money's at. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that could be a possibility. The other thing, um, you know, as we say in the South, uh, Tony Khan, bless his heart. Um, <laughs> we know that, you know, as MJF said, he's a mark. And uh, he used to say in some of those interviews, back in the day when he was a teenager and he did his chat room fantasy booking, he even said flair always would end up as his world champion. He's always wanted flair and he finally got him. And, uh, you know, I'm a horseman mark myself. And, uh, so, Hey, if, if I get Charlotte there and can pump up the women's division, then, Hey, let's do it. I'm all for it. Let's go. Yeah. While Flair himself is problematic at best as a human. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the wrestler Ric Flair could actually bring a lot of knowledge to that locker room. Like, you know, with Ric Flair nowadays, you know, we tend to look more about what more at him, the person and less about him, the, the wrestler uh, right. You know, but if you look at him, the wrestler, like he is actually a benefit to that young locker room and can bring, you know, can really help them. Um, and honestly, I think, you know, Charlotte's kind of wrestled her way through the entire women's locker room. You know, she's getting to that point where Roman is. It's like, who is really comp like other than Rhea? who we've seen her wrestle several times, like she doesn't really have a whole lot of competition. And I think she would bring a lot to that young women's locker room. Charlotte Flair needs to go to NWA for one match. Her and Camille. Oh yeah, trucker, that would be good. Trucker ass to AEW. I think. I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Flair to AEW would be a stretch. In wrestling, never say never, though. I think the bigger takeaway from it all is Flair is probably closer to being broke than he's ever been in his life. Like, you know the man brags about his, the amount that he spends, and that, in, that lifestyle doesn't come cheap. And the bookings haven't been coming the way they used to. And the flair name I know is worth a ton, but it's not worth the same amount that it was five years ago, 10 years ago. So I'm wondering um, what's up, Ted. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you there a little bit. Um, 
I know on Conrad's podcast when they talked, Conrad's talked about some stuff with him, but Rick has said on there the reason he didn't re-sign another Legends and stuff with WWE is he does want to do all this outside stuff. He's got the cannabis. He's got the woo wings. He's got the energy drink. He's got all that. And WWE wants their slice of the pie if he signs with them. Mm -hmm. And this way he can do stuff independent. See, that's why I love you, Ted, is because you're even smarter than I am. That's oh no, I no! I just, I just know how to fake it. I could have been making all that up, and y'all have never known it. But uh, it just sounded like I knew what I was talking about. It convinced the shit out of me, so I'm with it. You know, okay, what? Maybe that's he's good. Not broke. He's just a really good fucking businessman. Ted convinced. There me you right go. Right there, see? <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, Rick has always loved Vince. After that time, Vince got him out of bankruptcy, and I think now that he knows with the TK, TKO and all that other stuff, because that'll be the other thing we're going to get ready to see is look when they, the merger happened with the UFC and some of those legends like Randy Couture and all them, they kicked them out the door. And that company is, even though they might say Vince or Triple H or whatever's in charge, when it comes to the business point, some of these old guys on those legend contracts and all that, they're not going to resign them. They're going to let them go out the door. They're all about the money and the profit margin. Yeah. I mean, some of these legends deals, like they don't do anything. Like, honestly, yeah. I think, especially with, with Rick in particular, uh, I think that Vince kept him on a legends deal to make sure that he always had money in his pocket. And that he yeah. would never be in a situation where he's broke. So I think some of these legends deals are more for a friendship sort of situation yeah. between Vince and the person and not necessarily because they are doing anything for the WWE. Right. I mean, when I win the lottery and become a billionaire, I'm probably going to sign y'all to some kind of no work job that you're not going to do anything, but I'll just pay you. Exactly. See, I can't wait for that to happen. I'm so ready to have a no work <laughs> job again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I uh, gonna stick with AEW for a little bit. Matt Hardy said it says on his podcast that the fans will be seeing a different side of him soon. Do we need a hundredth rebranding of Matt Hardy in AEW? <laughs> again? Again. What's he going to be this time? I don't know. <laughs> Willy Wonka? Broken, broken, Matt Hardy? <laughs> so uh, I don't... Uh, <laughs> Matt just simply uh, says, no, we don't yeah. need another Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way to put that than no. Yeah. Listen, hear me out. I've said it a couple times. On the Jericho cruise this year, they've got Devon and Bubba Ray. Like, they're Edge and Matt Christian. Dugley. Huh? Matt Dugley? They have, uh, are not Bully. They have Bully Ray. Sorry. They have Bully Ray and they have Devon. Uh -huh. Like, we're, we're, we're close. We're close to having TLC3, my friends. Not that we want it, but we want it. <laughs> Sure, Britter, we do want it. <laughs> Brokeback Mountain, Matt Hardy might be fun teaming with Hangman. That would be fun. Uh, and a, a very, very, very adamant no from Ritter. Listen, <laughs> I just need Edge and Christian to make up and be friends and then just beat the, sh the absolute piss out of the Young Bucks. That's what I want. <laughs> we don't need that. One of them will die if they do TLC 45. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the team has spoken here. I don't disagree that for nostalgia's sake, it wouldn't hurt to have all six of them be in the ring together. But I don't necessarily think we need to book them in any type of match that will matter. Yes, we do. It would make for a great photo op. It would. Because you could recreate the picture of them standing in the ring at WrestleMania 17. Like the six of them standing there with the ladder. 
and like all looking up at the tag belts. You could recreate one of those 20 years later or whatever and be a bomb ass picture. I do yeah. not think those six men need to be in a match together in 2023. You just, you just bust on my job, Sam. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> the annual injury bug has hit. A, hit. Big in AW, Adam Cole, Don Moxley, and Brian Danielson all recovering from injuries and or surgeries alongside a slew of other mid-card talent. Is this a reoccurring problem for AW? Um, Brian Danielson has been telling people he has a um, a fractured orbital bone and it was the result of a freak accident. He says he caught a straight elbow or forearm during a basic collar and elbow tie-up with Andrade. Do y'all feel like AEW has a lot of injuries? Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, they I, do I, seem to have a lot. I believe it's because uh, I think I told Will this earlier. They have gone to the well one too many times. They're now going to the wells normal. And I feel like they, the wrestlers over there, feel like they have to put everything on the line every night to impress us where well, they really don't. Yeah. No, I don't disagree. No, I mean, I, again, it's the whole thing. I did a, uh, a whole episode about this uh, back in the archives on the Hill Truth podcast where you can find every one of your audio platforms about how um, modern day wrestling is like American Idol. Um, you know, they've got these singers out there, uh, especially the women, no disrespect to the women, but they will, uh, hit, uh, a, uh, a high note, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion to get a pop from the crowd, but there's no story in their song. Whereas the guy that won American Idol this week, the, uh, Hawaiian guy, he sung with emotion and that's what got him the win. And some of those country singers, them guys that can't hit high notes that have won in the last few years, they've told stories. And wrestling, sometimes, if we're not careful, can be the same way. They're just going out there to do the crazy stuff or whatever for the pop, and they get that immediate gratification microwave dinner. But sometimes you like a, a Thanksgiving turkey that you got to cook for four hours, you know? Sometimes it's good to have an FTR match where you got to rest hold every now and then. Okay. We need that. So, uh, yeah, sometimes they've went to the well too, too often. Like he said, you know, uh, I've said this, there's too many matches with, a, uh, uh, I, I can't pronounce it, but that Tope Suicida. Okay. If you're on the same show as Darby Allen, you should not be doing a Tope Suicida because he's the only one that can, fly through the ropes and Darby is indestructible for right now. And, you know, he just does all this stuff eventually to catch up with him. But Hey, some of this stuff, let's bring it back down a little bit, bring it back down. Ted is a legend and another former smack draw alum. <laughs> he also says you kind of look like captain Spalding from, uh, Oh, I did shave my, yeah. If, if nobody's noticed from last time, we were losing it, so we just went ahead and shaved yeah. it all off, baby. It looks fantastic. I like it. I ain't mad about it. Thank you. You're always going to be better looking than me, Ted. There's nothing we can do well, about it. Well, no, it's just I will go bald on my own terms, not Mother Nature's. <laughs> I will do it on myself. Fair. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Uh, while confirming that Drew McIntyre still has not re-signed with WWE, Fightful Select noted that McIntyre's current deal will expire before Mania 40. The report also reminded us that TKO isn't being as proactive about con contract negotiations as WWE was pre-merger and that Becky Lynch and many others have contracts set to expire this year. You kind of trailed off at the end. What was the last thing you said? Uh, Becky and others have de have deals that expire this in twenty twenty four. Oh, 
So the bidding wars of 2024. Oh it's yeah. It's gonna be a lot more than MJF on the market from the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah. What's Jack good, has. Jess? Good to see you, bud. Hi, Jess. Hi, Jess. Um, let's see some other things that are important uh before we talk about um uh crown Crown jewel Jewel. i was like there's words that i need to say that aren't computing in the brain um let's see uh pw insider says sarray is it sarray s-a-r-r-a-y sarray sarray Saray, but not Saraya. Oh, is in nego- fucking cat. Get out of the office. It's in negotiations to return to the United States to perform in the belief that she is not in talks with WWE. I guess she's from she's New Japan. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Yep. Scal says yeah. Yeah. Um, she was in WWE, she was in NXT 2.0, and then I guess they cut her, and she's coming back to the U.S., but she has no plans to go to WWE. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know what I just realized, and this sounds really bad? Mm-hmm. Where the fuck is Austin Theory? He was... Literally just on SmackDown. Was he? he yeah, he, yeah lost he, just lost he just lost a match. To Kevin I, Owens. I yeah. guess they just did It was like him. a really banger of a match. Like match of the night. Like really, really great match. Have you stopped watching wrestling? No, I think I may have fallen asleep in that match. Oh, because it was like a really, really good match. But like that's the first <laughs> time he's been on in a while, right? No, he's in A-Town Down Under. Him and uh, Morgan oh, Wallen are a whole oh, ass tag team. Right. She had the Harry. Oh, yeah, she did have the Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, Saray will join a faction with EO and Kai. They're saying that she's not coming back to WWE. So. I don't know who she is. So I don't care if she's coming back to WWE. I don't know. Um, Let's see. AEW is still undecided on a tag team championship match for full gear. The Young Bucks won a title shot at Wrestle Dream, but that has never been brought up on television since. The Bucks versus current champs Ricky Starks and Big Bill has been discussed, but this is just one of many different things that was thrown out there. So we've hot potato the TNT title, and now we're starting to what hot potato the tag titles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because. Until you said something, I forgot Ricky Starks and Big Billy even held them things. They upset the best tag team of this yeah, generation. In the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ted, what's this their generation? Name? Who are they, Ted? Uh, yeah, I mean, from everything I saw, that, um, you know, it, uh, I read one report that said, uh, you know, it was Dax's idea to. You know, go ahead and the way the wind went and everything like that. Um, so I don't know. I think also they probably wanted to give Ricky Starks a little bit of a gold belt to keep him interested because Ricky would probably be one of those that would be ready. I don't know what his contract status is, but definitely with his friendship with Cody, that he could definitely be one of those that could jump ship. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't think they should hot potato it. I think they should leave it uh, because, I mean, I love Big Bill. I I love Big Bill. Now, I I love this uh, resurgence of him. Um, So, you know, if if the Bucks go after it, I think the Bucks need to lose and and, uh, go ahead and – because I think they're uh, they're headed for – they're headed for a heel turn. And uh, don't know when it's going to happen or how, but uh, they're headed for a heel turn. So they need to lose some matches and uh, get yourself, uh, you know, get yourself a little storyline going there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is my last thing before we get into some Crown Jewel stuff. Um, we talked about um, AEW and their streaming. 
Um, as of a few weeks ago, A Brothers and Warner Brothers were were unable to come to terms on a deal that would have included television and pay-per-view rights, as well as the AEW and Ring of Honor libraries. Those at Warner Brothers stated that Tony Khan has a particular value that he believes the AEW li library is worth. And I guess they don't agree. So. What I know. could the library possibly be worth? The company was graded by Forbes to be worth $2 billion. I know he's not going to say that's what his library is worth, but when WWE bought WCW, a lot of people said ultimately they were buying the intellectual properties and the library, and they paid, what, $1.2 million for WCW yeah. or something like that? So, I mean, if you look at AEW as a comparable set, like – I would probably say a million to two million dollars for those for the the library rights. Like it's not a I don't want to say it's not a ton of money, <coughs> but when you look at a two billion dollar company, two million is what is that one percent less than one yeah. percent of your total worth? Yeah. Scal says it's worth five dollars. <laughs> five dollars. <laughs> Somewhere between a five and a million dollars. Then we were close. <laughs> uh, so it's off to Crown Jewel. Logan Paul is the new WWE US heavyweight title. Uh, what the fuck is wrestling in 2023? Uh, Logan Paul said, uh, speaking to Mail Sport, I'm so stoked that Triple H and the company believes in me like they do. Hopefully I can make them proud, and I know I will. He's super receptive to my ideas. I'm a content creator, keyword creator. I like to make stuff. I come up with ideas. When I pitch my ideas, he's all ears all the time. We bounce ideas off each other. We go back and forth and usually land on stuff that's pretty epic. It's super collaborative, and I like that they give me the freedoms to be who I am in their company. You hear a lot of times people say that in WWE you get no creative and it's all what the machine wants. But to hear somebody like Logan Paul come in and say they're giving him the creative to do whatever he wants, Ted, this specifically goes to you, my man. Are they giving Logan Paul special treatment because of who he is in the, the content creation realm and the world of the YouTube generation. Absolutely. And I love it. I, I love, I love uh, the Paul brothers are great heels. What? <laughs> corny to the bone. I mean, they're just corny. They're, they, they're, they're selling you magic beans. They're doing whatever they can. And, Triple H, these guys know what the future is because, again, when you compare WWE's YouTube views to their actual ratings, it's like 10, 20, 30 times more. They know about social media and how to do that. They know how to do the crossover stuff. And, yes, they're giving him special treatment, and the fans know it, and the fans hate him for it, and that's good Good heel heat. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Strap him up. Put the universal title on him. Heck with Cody Rhodes. Let him go to WrestleMania and let him beat Roman Reigns and parade both belts around, the U.S. and the universal. Now I mean, let's just go episode. all nope. in. Nope. Now as we close another episode of Botch Watson, <laughs> cherish out. <laughs> that was not where I thought that was going. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ted. <laughs> Listen, I... No, but... I mean, but let, let's be honest. Let's just, the whole streaming thing, the um, the YouTube stuff, I mean, we're talking about television deals, but within 10 years from now, ratings aren't going to matter because you're never going to know what the ratings are because every wrestling company will probably be on a streaming platform. They're not even going to be on cable television. And they know that they've got to get the Twitter. They've got to get the Instagram. They've got to get to YouTube. So, yes, they're going to give Logan Paul special treatment. They're going to do it. And people in the back are going to get mad. The fans are going to get mad. And I say, 
let's go for it. Let's ride this Logan Paul wave until it just crashes and burns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the thing. And like, I'm with Kay. Like, the Paul brothers are scumbags. I will say, and I've said this, and the same goes for Bad Bunny as well. I appreciate that the two of them have actually done, and I've said this a bunch of times, but they, they've done the work to learn how to properly wrestle, how to be safe in that ring, and not just come in there and hurt people like other celebrities would. You know, they may be, like, Logan Paul may be a complete fucking scumbag. But he's at least making sure to give the job 110%. I will give him that. He just needs to work on his mic skills. Because he's no actor. I agree with everything Ted said to an extent. I don't want him to have the universal <laughs> title. No. I'm going to pop the brakes there. I, did, I want the I internet did. to break. <laughs> I I said a lot of the same stuff though on the the prediction show we did on the table spot last week. I said Logan Paul was going to win. I said that it was a marketing ploy for WWE because they knew what, once he won, he was going to take that belt everywhere with him. Every show he was in. What's up, Shadow? Thanks for stopping by, but mm -hmm. I hope you're feeling better, man. We love you. Um, Everywhere he went, he would take the belt. Everything he did, he would have that belt. So it's the ultimate marketing ploy to put your aces in their places. I say that a lot. And Logan winning that belt now is going to put those aces in their places because every impulsive episode or every YouTube video or every, you know, whatever, the, what's his drink, prime energy, every time he does anything now, it's going to be WWE United States champion Logan Paul. It's a great marketing. It, it's it is. probably the best marketing plan they've had in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like my nephew, like my nephew, all he drinks is Prime now, and yeah. I mean he he watches a little bit of wrestling, but now Logan Paul's holding the belt. He's gonna want he's gonna want to know every anything and everything about it. Yep, and he's already started. Like hey, because so did you hear Logan Paul won a title? I went yeah 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 buddy I did. <laughs> he's already started so i think it's smart man get some get some younger eyes on the product agreed hmm. al you got anything for us before we get into the the meat and taters um we talked about Kyrie zane uh i mean we t i will say this usually the saudi shows are super high energy and that crowd's like really into it because you know they're afraid they're gonna get like murdered if they're not. <laughs> Jeez. I just feel like this Saudi show wasn't as good as the rest of them have been. Like for a Saudi show, it was kind of eh. I don't know. I think it maybe because they had to change venues and there wasn't as many people in the crowd. I don't know, but it just it didn't have the pizzazz that the normal Saudi shows do. Um, that's an easy answer because the two biggest stars that the Saudis love were not there, and that's Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. That's true. There was no yeah. – it's the first Saudi show they've done that didn't have Brock Lesnar on the card. And and Goldberg. I mean, you know, you always got – you need to bring Goldberg to Saudi. You need to pay him the money – and bring Goldberg back to Saudi. Even when he's 70 years old, bring Goldberg to Saudi. I'm just telling you. There's a lot of WCW holdouts in Saudi Arabia. They love Goldberg. Uh, the, Cena, the Cena giving the rub to Solo. I feel like there was a lot to take away from that moment because that was a great hard-hitting match. Cena had to have the, the whole kitchen thrown at him before he would eat the pin. Um, I felt like there were a lot of highs, but there were also equally amount of lows where there was just kind of like the, the hill, they called it like the peaks and valleys and their peaks were high, but their valleys, it seemed like you could hear a pin drop in that arena at some point. You know what I mean? It went from being dead fucking silent to being as loud as hell and just back and forth. And sometimes it felt like there was nothing in between those two decibel levels. 
<laughs> Katie says, or we just tell Bill to stay home for good. <laughs> um, I wish I had a Ryback moment for you guys, but Ryback really didn't do anything stupid this week. There's no Ryback moment this I week. I mean, he talked about that he he in his in his fear in his mind he's better than Roman uh, because he beat him so many times. You know, like when he debuted the Shield. Um, so he says he's beaten Roman more than anyone. Uh what was the other one uh, that was kind of like? Um, he said that the wrestlers need, like, WWE needs to have an off season so that the wrestlers get breaks. I mean, I don't necessarily, like, disagree, but what are they going to do? Run reruns of Raw? No one's going to watch that. Um, do you have any Marty Jannetty Facebook posts of the week? Those are always good. Oh, yes, I do have one of those. I do have one of those. His Facebook posts are pretty um, pretty funny. He said something about... Um, it was Hulk Hogan. And Hulk the... Hogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Pull it up. God, this was the best headline I've heard in a while. Um, uh, da, 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 da. He said that Hulk Hogan once threw a wild party that featured a gumball machine filled with mixed drugs. You turn it and you take whatever comes out. It's right there when you walk in the front door and just turn it and th three, four, five pills just fall out. <laughs> they like to party. Bo, you ever been to a party with a, a gumball machine full of uh, <laughs> sort of tablets? <laughs> uh -oh. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Is that, it's like, uh, you know, uh, like when you, you set up a trash can and everyone brings a bottle of liquor. And as you walk into the party, you pour the bottle of liquor into the trash can. And it's just the hunch punch. But it's not as much fun. At the end but of the it's night. not as much fun if you just throw a bunch of drugs in a... <laughs> Marty Jannetty's wild. I think that's safe to say. Marty Jannetty is as wild as Ryback is crazy. Yes. Except for this week, because he wasn't really crazy. Like, there literally wasn't anything really crazy. I bet he got banned on TikTok. That's why his dumbass wasn't alive. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but yeah. Like, the, the videos that he put out this week, like, weren't crazy stuff. Um, oh, he did say that the worst match he ever was in was uh, an elimination chamber match with Mark Henry. So I guess uh, Mark Henry's uh, someone got thrown into the plexiglass, so Mark Henry came out early, and he didn't think that that was fair in a fixed match. But meh. he seems to complain about a losing uh, a predetermined sport an awful lot. He does. 